beautiful Zion that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jonas, and the title of this video is Interracial Marriages and the Bible. This, brothers, sisters, and heathen, is a hot topic. It is also a topic that doesn't get enough coverage and the proper coverage. As soon as you start to make your point, someone wants to label you a racist, which is a modern term and not a biblical term. For a clear understanding, we have to see what the Most High intended and use that as our foundation of truth and guidance. I want to get this out there now. Let me make this perfectly clear. I am not a racist. I don't hate so-called white people or any other people of color on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 23 verse 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So you see, I can't be on the good side of the Most High and hate so-called white people, the Egyptian and my own people. Now, as I said before, this is about what the Creator wants for all nations, but especially His people Israel. The problem we have today is waking up and seeing your sins and then repenting. When it comes to interracial marriages in this day and time, it is very difficult to determine what to do for those that are already married. Now, we'll see some examples in the Bible, but today it won't be that clear cut. As a chosen people, the Most High said, Deuteronomy 7 verse 1, When Yahweh thy Elohim shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and had cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when Yahweh thy Elohim shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. The Most High would bring us to fight the nations that were in the land he promised us, and we were to kill them all and make no treaty or agreement with them. Verse 3, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. We were commanded not to make marriages with them. He said, don't give our daughters to them and don't take their daughters for our sons. Now that's clear. No marrying other nations. But why? It was for a specific reason. Verse 4. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of Yahweh be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. The Most High knew that marrying other nations would disrupt our worship and obedience to him because a foreign wife of an Israelite man would teach the children the ways of her people and a foreign husband of an Israelite woman would corrupt the minds of their children. They would also prefer one language over another language and fall out of the little understanding they have as Israelites. You see, the Most High told us these things because he saw the problems 
long before they would happen. And like a good parent, he warned his children, us, the Israelites, to keep us from harm. Verse 5, But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. You see, this is what will happen in interracial marriages. And I'm not even scratching the surface. The foreign spouse of another nation or race today would worship a false God, believe in a false religion, put up false images like the white Jesus, Buddha, or something else, and accept false days of worship and adopt traditional days of satanic worship we call holidays. People cling to it by saying it's tradition. My father, my mothers, they did it. Their parents did it before them. It's tradition. Like that makes it right. Satan has holidays and we, the Israelites have holy days given to us by the most high Yahweh himself. Now the nations are heathen can intermarry, eat unclean foods, hold on, to traditional satanic holidays for the time being. But Israel are a chosen people by the most high. Verse six, for thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy Elohim. Yahweh thy Elohim had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Israel are to be a holy people to Yahweh our Elohim. Yahweh, our Elohim, have chosen us to be a special people to himself, set above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Meaning, we can't do what the nations or heathens do, but they can try to follow after us, behind us, with the understanding that they are below us. As Deuteronomy 7, 6 says. Now, somebody is saying, that's racist talk. That's hate speech. That's language of an extremist. We should be all one people and equal. I don't care what people say because that is a total pot of crop. I care what Most High says, and he says, don't marry outside your people. You see, it all began in Genesis before the flood and things went wrong and it ended badly for all people on the earth. You know, they all drowned, except for eight. Let's go to Genesis 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. There were three groups of people at that time. The sons of men, the children of the devil, and the sons of the Most High. The sons of the Most High were men of the bloodline of Seth. They were not angels. God never, ever, ever called angels his son. 1 John 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, Israel, that we should be called the sons of the Most High. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. The Israelites and those prior to the flood that follow after the Most High's ways and that were righteous, but they went over to the dark side by marrying the daughters of men and were no longer considered sons of the Most High. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be talking about glorification. But we know that when he shall appear, when Christ return, we shall be like him, glorified in a spirit body, for we shall see him as he is. Verse two further confirms that we are the sons of the Most High and not the angels. Christianity is stupid because I hear them say angels are sons of God. That's a very deceitful lie. 
These people do not know what they are talking about. They deceive everybody that listen to them, except those that have a grip on the word. Hebrews one verse five for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Hebrews one five is asking you which of the angels name one that the most high said at any time, you are my son this day. Have I begotten you? And when did the most high say, I will be to him or be to this angel, a father and he, or this angel will be to me a son. The most high or God never did. Angels are God's helpers. They are ministering spirits. Look here. Hebrews one. Verse 13, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Meaning Israel, the Israelites, will be heirs of salvation and not everyone in the world. See, they are the most high's helpers. They are all ministering spirits sent out to minister for them who will be heirs of salvation. And that's Israel, not the nations or heathens. Only the Israelites have angels watching over them. There were the sons of men, these were other men that the Most High created after Adam and Eve. That's who Cain took a wife from. Let's go to Genesis 4, verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of Yahweh and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. So there was a land of Nod and people there. Wow, who could these people be? These were the people, the men and women that the Most High created after he created Adam and Eve. He put Adam and Eve in the garden separate from them. Verse 17, and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So now Cain took a wife from the land of Nod had a son, Enoch, and later built a city and named it after his son, Enoch. To build a city would mean there are a lot of people there. One man cannot build a city. Then there were sons of Satan or children of the devil. These were the children or descendants of Cain. Genesis 6 verse 2 that the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So you had Seth's descendants marrying the descendants of men and the descendants of Cain as we approach the time of Noah. The problem was that Satan had started to alter the DNA of the children of men. Just as he is altering the DNA of men today, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. These women that were of the children of men after they had their DNA altered looked pretty doggone good to the eyes of the children of, of the most high. So they took them for wives. You know how we are. Verse three. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that. He also is flesh yet. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The most high would shorten the lifespan of all people. Some years after the flood, after the population began to rise. So as the population began to rise after the flood, the years got shorter and shorter 
And now the max that someone will live is 120 years. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. There were giants in the earth in those days. These giants, or very tall men, about 8 to 13 feet tall, were a product of altered DNA, and many of them had six fingers and six toes. That trait is still seen in people today. Now I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard Oprah Winfrey and Holly Berry has six toes. I don't know for sure. And really don't care on a personal level, but there are people out there with this trait. You can research it and find it yourself. That didn't come from Adam and Eve. They had five fingers and five toes. Verse five, and the most high saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart or his mind was only evil continually. The sons of God, along with the other people went off into great wickedness. And most of this was caused by intermarriage, not staying true to the beliefs of one people, the people who knew of the most high and revered him and worshiped him. So the most high would kill everybody on the earth except Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives. Now there is no 100% proof about what I'm about to say, but it makes sense. It will make sense through all the mixing during that 1000 year period or so that corrupted DNA got into the woman that would be Ham's wife. Let me say that again. During the mixing, after the DNA of of the sons of men were corrupted, that DNA got into the woman that will become Ham's wife. That DNA in Ham's wife brought forth the so-called giants after the flood. It was Ham's descendants that took on a very tall stature that we call giants. These are the same people we had to deal with when we went to take the land that the Most High gave us. This is the proof that backs up what I'm telling you. Angels or spirits don't have seed or sperm. For a spirit to have sex, it has to possess a person. For a spirit to have sex, it has to possess a person. And that sperm or egg is of a flesh man or flesh woman and not an angel. Remember in Deuteronomy 7 verse 1, we were to cast out or kill the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. These were large people or so-called giants. Remember there was a wrestler named Andre the Giant. Well, a dude was just tall and big. He wasn't 60 feet tall, but he was called a giant. The Most High does everything big to show us and the world his might. If you read, you'll find events kept us from killing all of them. Something took place that kept us from killing all of them. Joshua made a covenant with them. So y'all go read that story and you see what happened. And all this happened for a reason. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So what was the reason? All this was for our testing and building us up as a nation. Judges 3 verse 1. Now these are the nations which Yahweh left. Which Yahweh left to prove Israel by them. Even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. These nations, which Yahweh left were to prove Israel or test Israel. Because by the time of the judges, there were people among us who had not known war. 
Now, verse two, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war. Yeah, the God of love is trying to teach his people war. How about that? At the least, such as before knew nothing thereof. They were also left to teach future generations war. Someone, or especially a Christian, is saying, I thought God was a God of love. Well, he is. Yes, he is. But he is also a man of war. Exodus 15, verse 3. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. The Most High is a warrior, and he wants his people to not only be kings, princesses, and priests, but he also wants us to be warriors. Judges 3, verse 3. Namely, five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hevites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath. These are those that were left in the land after we took it. Five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that lived in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon to the entering in of Hamath. Verse four. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of Yahweh, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. These nations, the most high would use to test or prove us to find out whether we would listen to the commandments of Yahweh that he commanded our fathers by the hand of Moses. Verse five. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites and Amorites and Perizzites and Hevites and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. We disobeyed the most high and failed miserably. We intermarried and went off into wickedness. And it wasn't like we needed that extra help. We could be wicked enough on our own. We come over to King Solomon, the wisest man ever to live outside of Christ. First Kings 11 verse one. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, which are Chinese, Ammonites, which are Japanese, Edomites, which are so-called white folks, Zidonians, which are another form of Hamites and Hittites, another form of Hamites. King Solomon's wisdom was suppressed by covetousness for 31 flavors of women. I mean, he wanted some from every nation. He loved strange women or foreign women, not of Israel, the daughter of Pharaoh, an Egyptian, women of the Moabites, we call Chinese today, Ammonites, we call Japanese today, Edomites, we call Caucasian or white people today, Zidonians and Hittites, which were Hamites or Africans, like Pharaoh's daughter. I'm sure there was some more that's not listed here, but all, all the nations around Israel, yeah, Solomon had, had a taste of them. And he loved them. Truly, he loved them. But that doesn't make it right. Just like a lot of you love your spouses today of other nations and, and so on, but that doesn't justify it in the eyes of the Most High. Always keep that in mind. You can have good intentions and still be in sin. 1 Kings 11, verse 2. Of the nations concerning which Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, ye should not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they would turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. See, Solomon was in love with them. Solomon was completely blinded by what he wanted and not what the Most High wanted. All that wisdom was corrupted by the flesh. The Most High wanted for us as a nation to be within our own nation, to marry within our own nation. 
Now, what Solomon did caused him to sin. And Israel did follow him in sin. And that took us down two roads of hell as Northern Kingdom Israel and Southern Kingdom Judah. If the head is sick, the body is sick. We had been following the wrong king since we asked for a man king during the time of Judges when Samuel was old. Now, during the time of Ezra, when Israel was being restored by Zerubbabel, Nehemiah also, there was a great sin in the land of Israel. Let's go to Ezra 10 verse 1. Now, when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of the Most High, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children. Who were these people? For the people wept very sore. Why were all these people crying? They must have realized they did something wrong against God. Verse 2. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. There is hope. Keep hope alive. They admitted they married strange wives or women from another nation or race, as we would say today. Verse 3. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives, to put away all the wives and such as are born of them. They're going to put away the children too, according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of our Elohim. And that's the problem today. We don't tremble at the commandments of our great God and let it be done according to the law. So they wanted to repent and make a covenant or agreement with the most high to put away or divorce all their wives and be separate from the children that were born of them. Now the most high don't like us to divorce, but they were divorcing women that was unlawful for them to marry anyway. Now, some of you slick Christians are going to say, Moses and Joseph married strange women, being Egyptian and Ethiopian. Yes, they did. But what are the facts? The blood covenant was not in force at the time, and more importantly, the Most High had mercy on them. Most importantly, the Most High had mercy on them. Why? because there was no other Joseph could marry. And a man has needs and needs not to be in sin. So he married an Egyptian. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Moses was away 40 years from his people that was still in Egypt and had needs and needs not to be in sin. So he married an Ethiopian. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is all before the blood covenant was in force. So the most high had mercy on those two men and allowed them to marry outside of their people or race so that they wouldn't be doing things to satisfy their flesh. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Verse five, then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites in all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word. And they swear, Ezra made the putting away of their wives and children legal before the Most High, and the people did swear. Verse 10, And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have trespassed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now, listen to what Ezra is saying here. 
was those sins that those people committed by marrying the strange wives, just personal sins for them? No. He said, you increase the trespass of Israel by them marrying strange wives of another nation or race. They increase the sins of the nation. Things become cumulative. The most high will judge you for your own sins today, not the sins of your father, but he will also judge us as a nation. We are a family. And he'll bring the hammer down on everybody. Verse 11. Now, therefore, make confession unto Yahweh, the most high of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land, and from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. It was done. Now, to most of you, that all sound cruel and cold-hearted, but the Most High means what he told us in the Bible. Remember, our God allowed Satan to kill all of Job's children, ten of them, all of their sorry but celebrating their birthdays every month. The Most High later replaced all of them and gave Job greater riches and long life. What you have or think you have in this world is perishable. That includes your family. If you have God, then you have everything you need except a righteous helpmate or spouse. But through him, you can get that. Verse 17. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. They got the job done quick. It was a lot of them, but they got it done quick. When you're in sin, you want to repent quickly before the Most High hands down his judgment against you. Grace periods can be long or grace periods can be short. But one thing for sure, judgment will come. Verse 18. And among the sons of the priests there were found that had taken strange wives namely of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Uzadik, and his brethren, Masiah, and Elizer, and Jerob, and Gedaliah. And they gave their hands that they would put away their wives. And being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. Today, we don't offer up animals thanks to Christ being our or Israel's sacrifice. Now, the interracial marriages today, should you divorce your spouse? I would say no. But ultimately, that's up to you. And what you know about your spouse's bloodline, and you have to be careful. There have been mixing of Israel for thousands of years. With that said, Look at these scriptures, the parable of the weeds, Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. The kingdom of heaven, in this case, Israel is good seed sown in the field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. While men slept or over the course of time, his enemy came and sowed tars, non-Israelite people and the wicked amongst the wheat. Satan caused Israel to intermarry through lust and covetousness and went his way. Satan will cause you to sin and he'll skip off down the road on his way. You know, kind of like you saw the Joker in the Batman movie. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tars also. Tars look very similar to wheat and can be mistaken for wheat. Like black people that have white fathers that are Edomites that can be mistaken for an Israelite. 
Like Lenny Kravitz, as an example, he looks black, but he has a, a white father. Verse 27. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had it tares? The Most High had good seed in the field during the time when he began in Israel. But Satan has been watering down the wine ever since. Slow and methodical. Verse 28. He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, or no, lest while ye gather up the tars, ye root up also the wheat with them. So they wanted to go gather up the tars or the non-Israelites and wicked. The men during Ezra's time, as we read, was able to do that because they knew the bloodline of the strange women they married. The mixing wasn't as bad as it is today, and they knew the bloodline of the women they married. They knew they were true women of other nations. Christ said no, because while you gather up the tars, you might root up also the wheat with them. You know how you have something in your garden at home, and you, you have to be careful pulling up the weeds because you don't want to pull up the good stuff with it. This is what Christ is talking about. They might make a mistake and remove the wrong ones. And that in itself is a great sin. Verse 30, let both grow together until the harvest. That's the harvest is when Christ returns. Let them all just be together until he returns. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, these are the angels that Christ will send. Gather you together first the tars, get the wicked and the non-Israelites out of there, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn, that wheat is Israel, the righteous. So Christ said, let both grow together until the harvest. If you are married to someone of another nation or race, don't divorce. And in the time of harvest, Christ will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tars, the non-Israelites, and wicked, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat, or Israelites, and righteous into my barn. The angels will know who are true Israelites, who are not true Israelites, who are wicked, and who is righteous. They will separate at that time. That way no mistakes are made. No souls are destroyed because one person is told, well, you're an Edomite. And that person might not be an Edomite. That person's great, great, great grandfather might be an Israelite. Black as tar. But somehow or another, he, he, he got a white woman pregnant and she had a son. And that son came out white. And his son came out white. And his son came out white. And his son came out white. That's still an Israelite seed. So... You have to be careful. And it works the other way around too. You know, it could be a, a great, great, great grandfather. Could be a white man hitting up on a black slave. That black slave boy come out black. His son come out black. His son come out black. His son come out black. But that black child is an Edomite. So you have to be careful about destroying things. But you do have to make it known what it says about the Edomites, as we preach this word. No getting around that. It is very difficult today to know for certainty who is and is not an Israelite. You cannot go by the color of someone's skin or where they were born and raised. It's about bloodline. It always have been about bloodline. And stay away from DNA tests. That's crap. And they are ran by the enemy in a way. Most of these DNA places are ran by so-called Jewish people. Stay away from it. If you are already married to someone of another nation or race, when you were awakened, pay attention to what I'm saying here. Now, if you are already married to someone of another nation, or you think is of another nation or race, 
when you are awakened, stay the course. If all is well in your marriage and your spouse is supportive of you turning to the most high as a true Israelite, if you are single, use your best judgment after being righteous and praying to the most high about this subject. Learn what you can about that person's recent bloodline as far back as you can go on their father's father's side, etc. While taking into consideration their outward appearance of race and color and then decide if you should marry that person. All you are doing is trying to be in step with what the most high commanded us. If you are satisfied after all that, well, you did your best to be right. Remember, if you are already married to someone of another nation or race, when you are awakened, stay the course, don't divorce. If all is well in your marriage and your spouse is supportive of you as an Israelite that is returning to the Most High, don't make a snap decision concerning putting away your wife and children because Satan has done a real, really good job on mixing things up. I hope this lesson opened your eyes to some things you didn't know and gave you some positive direction with scripture to help ease your minds, but educate your minds according to the word of the most high and help the single Israelites in their search for a spouse. So peace to you, Israel. Tick tock.